is no respite in war. While both sides may see short reprieve after the madness that Deathwing unleashed upon the world, the Mad Titan Sargeras is about to make his next move. There will need to be even more sacrifice to stop his dark machinations. Don't forget to like and subscribe and come take a seat by the safety of the fire. The portal had to be closed if they were to have any hope, even temporarily, for even the madness and chaos of the demon throng paled in comparison to what waited on the other side. If the master dared tread in Azeroth, all would be lost. Malfurion had to remove the block that Savius, in his cleverness, had placed on the well, one that prevented the mages from accessing its power. To do this, he would use his druidic gifts to walk the dream. For Xavius was well guarded in the heart of the palace, and his magical array that held the block safe with him. But through the spirit realm, Malfurion could assault it directly. Xavius sensed his presence, however, and a dangerous battle ensued. While both were powerful beings, the dream was Malfurion's domain, and his strength here was undeniable. Subsequently, Xavius was killed in the battle, and the spell work destroyed. The large portal closed, the well's energies were tapped once more, and Xavius's tower exploded with it. In his temper, Sargeras intervened and plucked his spirit from its path to the Shadowlands. He would torture and twist it into a foul abomination. With a new form that now reflected his inner madness, he was sent back to Azeroth. Xavius was now the first satyr. While some remnants of the once proud night elf remained, he was also demon, complete with hooves and sharp talons and a mane. As a progenitor, his task was to twist the other highborn into his own image, to make them allies and servants of the Burning Legion forevermore, and to bring him the one who had stopped the portal for now, Malfurion. Illidan, during this time, however, had continued along his own path. He could not let the Resistance destroy the well, but he had no love for the highborn or the Legion either. Instead, he would travel to Zinashari and feign allegiance to Ashara, using the information of the coming attack to garner their trust. But all Illidan really wanted was power. Illidan was brought before the visage of the Dark God. He was tasked to seek out the demon soul as its power could be used to stabilize the portal once more. For now, Illidan would agree. But Sargeras had a gift for his newfound ally. He would grant him the power to see all magic and increase his strength tenfold. To this end, he burned the eyes from his skull, replacing them with motes of burning fellfire. Green tattoos sprung across his body, making him strong and resilient. Illidan was changed forever. There would be no going back. After a short while to heal, he was sent out to search for the artifact. Unbeknownst to all, Malfurion and his allies also searched for the device, knowing how devastating it would be if unleashed once more, and they tracked down Deathwing to his lair and attempted to steal it. However, something was wrong with the destroyer. His body had bloated and warped. The device and its power had corrupted him utterly. His goblin artificers attached large adamantium plates to his body just to hold him together. In one final risky gambit, they stole away the artifact only to be captured by Ashara's forces led by Illidan shortly after. This was a devastating blow. The device now powered an even stronger portal through the energies of the twisting nether, the war not only resumed, but escalated. Illidan returned to Malfurion and the Calderai defenders, and while they did not trust him after seeing him deliver the key to victory to their enemies, they had little choice to turn away from any potential allies. 
the final battle was coming. The one to end the war. Either they destroy the well now, or they are annihilated totally. The two brothers side by side once more against the coming threat. But still, many could not accept it. Why had the betrayer returned after handing the legion victory? It was when he was empowered by Sargeras himself that he saw it. The endless crusade that spanned all dimensions and time. That this battle here would never be enough to stop them. Even if they stopped them here, they would now need a way to end it once and for all. All the forces gathered. They would march back to the heart of their once beloved kingdom. They assaulted the palace from all sides, cleaving through the demon hordes. There stood Xavius with his elite demon forces, the last obstacle to the palace grounds. It was a young night elf named Chandra's Feathermoon who shot the killing blow. Not wanting this foul creature to ever return, Malfurion grew a tree and trapped his spirit within it. It was then cast to the bottom of the oceans. He would never know the peace of death, or be reborn in the demon's flames. He would watch and rot for all eternity down there in the darkness. But he was not alone. Something else was bound beneath these waves. Working in unison, the three heroic night elves, Malfurion, Tyrande and Illidan each played their part. They destroyed what portals they could and used their magic to interfere and twist the spells of the Legion. Tyrande was wounded by the satyr, and upon seeing this, it gave Malfurion the strength to cast one final spell. This would reverse the magic of the demon's soul, as it began to pull all the demons back in. Unfortunately, also the well itself. They had won, but at a terrible cost. The well was devouring the surrounding area, pulling all through the twisting nether. It was here that Sargeras attempted to push through and reopen the portal, causing a violent explosion so powerful that it would reverberate outward across the entire continent. Kalimdor cracked and the well drained. The oceans heaved and swelled to fill the wound. Tsunamis as tall as mountains washed over the land. Kalimdor was no more. Where once the well sat surrounded by endless beauty was now a swirling maelstrom of pure energy and terror. Most mortal creatures could not survive and would be cast into the depths of the sea. It is hard to imagine anything surviving this devastation. But many did. Whether fate or pure luck, both Malfurion and Tyrande survived. They gathered as many of their people as they could find and journeyed toward their ancestral home. The journey was long and hard, many still paralyzed by grief, not able to come to terms with what just happened. But for the first time, in a long time, they experienced joy. Mount Hyal and its beautiful grove-like basin had survived. The familiar and sacred land was a sight for sore eyes. They drew in closer to the great lake they held in high regard. But that's when they saw it. The waters of the well had been befouled, polluted by the magic of the well of eternity. It was then that Illidan emerged. He explained how in the moments at the end of the battle, he had taken several enchanted vials and filled them with the Well of Eternity waters. He had poured one in this sacred lake for the Night Elf to draw upon. They would need it when the demons returned, he exclaimed. Not realizing that in this act he had once again lit a beacon for the demons to find them. No matter how hard he tried, Malfurion could not get through to Illidan. He was so consumed by the magic he saw no hope. Instead, he was imprisoned for this crime, one which he would remain in for nearly 10,000 years. Malfurion would visit when he could to try and sway his brother from his path, 
but it was futile. Now unsure of what to do, they called upon the wisdom of the first protectors, the Aspects. They could not undo the act, but they could use it for good. Isera was first, reaching from the dream a single seed, born from a great tree named Gahania. Alex Straza placed the seed within the well and breathed her life-giving flames upon it. The Calderai watched in awe as the spectacular tree sprung to life, but it did not show signs of slowing down. This great tree would reach its roots deep within the mountains. Its branches would touch the heavens themselves. Nosdamu would bless the tree to be timeless. All those who dwelled around it would never see sickness or age. Isera worked her magic, binding the tree to the dream so that its life-giving energies may heal the world. However, for this she would need help. A pact was made. The night elf males would be trained in the arts of druidism. They would hibernate for many years at a time to help defend and tend to the dream. A heavy cost to be away from their loved ones, but they agreed that this was the way. As the night elves found a new path, Ashara and all those who followed her found themselves not so lucky. They were drowning as they plummeted to the darkest depths of the ocean. Their bodies would die, but the magic within them still hungered, keeping their spirits in a half state of undeath, becoming nothing more than wretched reflections of their former selves. But just like Xavius, Ashara would soon find out that the depths are not so empty. A dark and twisted god rules them from his prison. He offered Ashara a deal. Join him and rule for all time as queen, to bring about the rule of the Black Empire once more. Nazoth was true to his word. Upon her agreement he twisted her and all those who would follow. The visage finally bore the mark of the madness within. They would become serpent-like and move about the oceans with grace. They would become known to the world as Naga. But the part they have to play in the great story will have to wait until next time. Thank you so much to everyone who has dropped a comment, come to chat on the Discord, or even just left a like. And until next time, don't forget to come back. Anytime.